The top stories tonight and why news. Chaos erupts in several vaccination sites in Las Piñas and Manila cities as thousands line up to get their shots before the hard lockdown. MMDA Chairman Benhur Abalos seeks an investigation into the spread of rumors that unvaccinated persons will not receive cash aid from the government. Local government units set schedules for market trips during quarantine. None, a poor or, or authorized person outside of residence now allowed to fetch and pick up essential workers during the ECQ period. The faction of Energy Secretary Alfonso Cusi submits PDP Laban set of officers to Comelec. And Filipino boxer Yumir Manshal will take home a bronze medal from the Tokyo 2020 Olympics, while Carla Paalam gets a shot at another Olympic gold for the Philippines. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Thursday, August 5, 2021. I am Harleen Delgado. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the country and in other parts of the world. I'm Manilo Castro III. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am Maria Latoza. First in the news, vaccination centers in Manila and Las Piñas cities were flocked by people desperate to receive their jabs a day before the region shifts to the strict enhanced community quarantine. The panic vaccination resulted in overcrowding at the jab sites. Officials, according to officials, the circulating fake news are to blame for the incident. Janice and Hemta explains why. This video was taken earlier today at the vaccination center in SM San Lazaro in Manila. The person who filmed the video refused to reveal his true identity. However, he is among the people lining up at the mall as early as 2 in the morning to get vaccinated. Masa nagkagulo na kasi wala ng social uh, distancing, magkakatigit na lahat. Then kami ng kapatid ko, hindi kami nakipagsiksigan. Hindi na maintindihan kung nasan talaga kasi ang gulo talaga ng pila, wala talagang sistema. So wala talagang matinong usapan kung saan ba talaga nagpapapasok. According to him, they received a news that unvaccinated persons will not be allowed to enter establishments during the ECQ period. Bali po kasi nung dumaan po, bali po nung nakapila na po kami at that time, eh, may mga paalis na then they're informed na since magiging mandatory on August 25 na pag walang bakuna, hindi makakapasok sa mga certain establishments like malls. Kaya yung mga tao siguro nagpanik lahat mm -hmm. na nalaman nila na may first dose kanina. Kaya nga dun sa announcement na yun. Following the chaos, the Manila LGU halted the inoculation operation at SM San Lazaro. According to the Manila Police District, which is in charge of the crowd control, there are residents from neighboring provinces who flocked the job site. Marami uh, may mga taga Laguna, Pulapan, adjacent cities ng Manila, at sa mga taga Manila rin. Yun ang uh, nangyari kaya biglang nagsa dito sa bakunahan namin. Meanwhile, vaccinations were also suspended in two vaccination sites in Las Piñas, namely the Las Piñas Doctors' Hospital and SM South Mall, due to the influx of people. According to the Las Piñas local government, the long line stemmed from false information that unvaccinated people would not be allowed to receive cash aid from the government. <laughs> Investigate doon, meron kasi nagpakalat ng fake news na pag wala daw bakuna, walang ayuda. So that is the main reason kung bakit nagkaroon ng pagdumog sa pagdagsa ng mga tao doon. And doon sa isang site namin, may nakapagsabi din na dito sa Las Piñas Doctors Hospital, meron din mga non-resident ng Las Piñas na gusto magpabakuna sa Las Piñas. 
The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority has asked the National Bureau of Investigation to look into the spread of fake news. MMDA Chairman Benhur Abalos urged the public against spreading misinformation and to wait for their vaccination schedule. Wag na wag kayo maniniwala sa fake news. Ito'y na, na, ginugulo ang programa natin. Ang sinabi ba naman na kung wala kang bakuna ay wala kang matatanggap ng ayuda. Nagpanik ang mga tao nagpuntahan ng umaga sa mga vaccination center and please nananawagan ako sa lahat Huwag tayong maniwala sa fake news. Wala hong katotohanan yun. Janice and Hente, UNTV, Lose and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Meanwhile, Manila City Mayor Ispo Moreno Domagoso believes that politics is behind the influx of people in vaccination sites. This was after the local government found out that some of those who went in the vaccination sites are non-Manila residents who came from Bulacan, Cavite, Laguna, and Rizal. Mayor Domagoso added that agi agitators were to blame for the vaccination chaos. Hindi ko na ikukwento sa inyo, ha? Kung ano yung mga masamang balak ng iba, nandiyan na yan. Uh, I take full responsibility, pasensya na kayo mga kababayan, uh, pero huwag kayong mag-alala. Hahanapin ko ang punot dulo uh, noong sumigaw na yun daw may tao sa loob ng mall, nagumpisa na raw ang bakunahan, kaya sumugod ang tao. Local government unit officials could be held liable for dereliction of duty if they cannot ensure that minimum health standards such as physical distancing are observed in vaccination sites. Rosa Likons will tell us why. Malacanang has directed local government units to ensure crowd control and minimum health protocols are observed in vaccination sites. This after people flocked to several jab sites in Metro Manila. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque warned LGUs of consequences if vaccination centers become super spreader events. May possibility po talaga na magkaroon ng dereliction of duty so kinakailangan ipatupad po ang minimum health standards. So far, more than 10 million Filipinos are now fully vaccinated, but this is still far from the target population protection of the government. That is why there is no vaccine policy yet in the country that requires residents to submit their vaccination cards to avail the government's cash aid program or a pass to go to a specific place. Wala rin katotohanan na i-require natin ang bakuna para po sa ayuda. Wala pong katotohanan. Lahat po ng nangangailangan mabibigyan ng ayuda. Hindi po kayo hahanapan ng proof of vaccination. However, the palace appeals to the public in Metro Manila to be homeliners. Heads of the families are called to enforce household lockdown and only those authorized persons outside residence are permitted to go outside to prevent severe COVID-19 surge due to Delta variant. Ang aking panawagan po, wag na nating iasa sa gobyerno ang pagpapatupad ng ECQ. Lahat po ng hepe ng pamilya, mag-declare na po kayo ng lockdown, walang lalabas sa tahan. Kasi kung mga hepe magpapatupad niyan, sigurado po, hindi na mahihirapan ng gobyerno. The government is ready to impose the ECQ in Metro Manila tomorrow. And through this, the government hopes to slow down the daily recorded COVID-19 cases and prevent the healthcare facilities in the capital from being overwhelmed. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. After causing several backlash from the public, the Philippine National Police has revised its policy on fetching and driving essential workers by persons not allowed outside their homes during the ECQ period. Clea Ilagan will tell us why. The Philippine National Police and the Interagency Task Force has come up with a win-win solution for the smooth travel of authorized person outside of residence or APOR during the ECQ implementation. PNP Chief Police General Guillermo Eliazar says non-APORs can now fetch essential workers. Ako po'y nakagkaroon ng konsultasyon with other not na national task force and through our Secretary Eduardo Año ay uh, siya po'y nagbigay ng guidance na iaalaw na po itong mga non-APOR driver para sa mga Worker uppers natin. Non-uppers are required to present the following 
to the policeman money and supervising the border control points. Certificate of Employment or COE of the worker APOR from the employer, indicating the name of the designated non-APOR driver, the make and plate number of the vehicle to be used, and the contact number of the employer and a copy of business permit of the employer. Eliasar said they want to make sure that the company is among those allowed to operate during the ECQ. Ang police po natin, even sa, magsasagawa ng random checking, kung uh, totoo po itong mga dokumentong ito, pwede tumawag tayo, pwede mag-check. At kung malalaman po natin na mayroong paggalabag dyan o pagkabuso, eh pwede po natin na uh, uh, kasuhan at uh, ito pong either the employer or the worker upper or even uh, ito pong uh, non-upper uh, driver. Eliazar explained that the strict rule of Hatid Sundo was implemented because some people are using it as an excuse to go out and make unnecessary travels. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Quezon City government warned the people in engaging in illegal acts relating to COVID-19 vaccination and those violating the inoculation rules will now face fines and jail time in the city. Asher Kadapman Jr. tells us why live. Yes, Asher, go ahead. Diego, the Quezon City government received several reports about irregularity in the COVID-19 vaccination program. Major Mayor Joy Belmonte reveals that some individuals are fraudulently selling, distributing, or administering COVID-19 vaccines or COVID or vaccine slots. Others show up at vaccine sites with fake notification texts or emails from the city government, but are not on the list of confirmed vaccines for the day. There were also reports of tampering of vaccine cards and persons offering fake COVID-19 vaccines. Nakatanggap kasi po tayo ng maraming maraming reports ng mga taong nananamantala no, ng kanilang kapwa. Uh, at hindi po ito tama sapagkat napakaganda ng layunin ng programang ito. Libre po ang mga bakuna para po ito sa lahat ng tao. Pantay-pantay po ang pagtrato sa mga tao. Lahat sila ay mabibigyan ng pagkakato, mabakunahan, pagkusuunahin lang po ang mga pinaka-vulnerable. With this, jail time and fines await people behind the illegal acts in relation to COVID-19 vaccinations in Quezon City. Meanwhile, Mayor Belmonte also emphasizes the need to avoid panic buying and hoarding during the implementation of the enhanced community quarantine. Hence, the Quezon City Business Permit and Licensing Department is mandated to implement another ordinance regulating the selling of basic necessities during calamities. From August 6 to 20, the Quezon City government will limit the number of items or goods a person can purchase. Under the said ordinance, a number is limited to buying products including sardines, pork and beef canned goods, three-in-one coffee, whole loaf bread, instant noodles, eggs, and rice. Diego? Thank you. Asher Kadapan Jr. reporting live. The Department of Agriculture has assured the public that there is enough food supply for everyone, especially in the National Capital Region and nearby areas that will be placed under enhanced community quarantine effective tomorrow. Ray Pelayo explains why. Ten Kadiwa trucks will be roaming in various locations in Metro Manila starting tomorrow. According to Agriculture Assistant Secretary Christine Evangelista, the rolling stores will bring fresh produce straight from the farmers closer to residents amid the enhanced community quarantine due to the COVID-19 crisis. Meron na po tayo ngayong mga truck na mag-iikot na may dalang gulay. Ikino-coordinate din po namin ito sa mga local government units para at least yung areas, barangays na who need it the most, ma-cater po natin yung kanilang pangangailangan. Consumers can buy basic farm products like chicken, pork, vegetables, and rice among others from the store. Products can also be bought for wholesale or retail. On-site Kadiwa stores located at the DA Central Office compound and other areas in Metro Manila will remain open. Meanwhile, food delivery trucks are still allowed to transport their goods during the ECQ period provided that they must present their food pass which can be acquired from the DA. 
we have our database so yung mga na-issuehan po last year na nasa database naman po mas mabilis pong ma-issuehan na yun in case na wala nila yung food pass nila kung di naman po nila nawala e valid po yan Ray Pilayo UNTV News and Rescue We serve the people We give glory to God For those watching our 24-7 live streaming on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on your screen and ring the bell for notifications. You may also follow us on Facebook. The number of calls at the One Hospital Command Center or OHCC, which refers COVID-19 cases to treatment facilities, has increased again in the past month. Aiko Miguel explains why. The One Hospital Command Center, or OHCC, received 730 calls yesterday, August 4. This number is twice higher compared with the calls the command center received in the previous months. The OHCC recorded over 600 daily average calls in the last three days. According to OHCC Operations Manager Dr. Bernadette Velasco, to prepare for the surge case capacity, they have added manpower and equipment to cater all the calls. So since um, last week of July, nakikita na natin na pataas po ng pataas yung number of calls natin. So ang trend po natin is increasing po yung number of calls. That's why we decided din po na to come out with a search capacity. So we try to na mabalikan po natin yung mga yung mga callers na yon so that baka may emergency talaga. We will try our best po na matawagan po yung mga hindi na hindi na ka, ano, hindi nagproceed po doon sa call. In a message, Treatment Czar and OHCC Head Undersecretary Leopoldo Vega said that 40% of the daily average calls are hospital referrals, 48% are temporary treatment facilities or TTMF referrals. Other calls are consultation, inquiries, and teleconsultations. The OHCC clarifies that they respond based on the needs of callers, whether COVID or non-COVID concerns. It's not disease based, but based on the assessment po ng ating call taker. Meaning to say, we prioritize po kung gising ba yung pasyente, humihinga ba siya ng tama, gumagalaw ba siya. So, if we see na medyo mag magkaroon ng problema po doon, hindi normal yung paghinga niya, or hindi tumitibok yung puso, hindi siya gumagalaw, then we categorize it as an emergency case. So, regardless po kung anong klaseng sakit po yan, we tag it as emergency and we refer it immediately in a health facility po. Otherwise, kung stable naman po yung pasyente natin, then we can endorse it to the proper institution po na pwedeng tumanggap po dun sa pasyente. Most of the calls the OHCC received are from National Capital Region, Central Luzon, and Calabar Zone, where there is a significant rise in COVID-19 cases and local cases of the Delta variant. The DOH also said they have been expanding their network in coordination with the Department of the Interior and Local Government and local government units. Hindi na lang po hotline ang meron tayo sa One Hospital Command. Meron na po tayo yung telemedicine. Uh, na ino-offer uh, through the One Hospital Command kung saan meron tayong telemedicine providers na connected no, doon sa kanilang system. Na ang local governments, meron mo din dapat na supplement dito sa One Hospital kung saan dapat may barangay hotlines tayo para sila rin po ay nakakakater sa mga tawag ng kanilang mga kababayan kung nangangailangan ng mga facilities o di kaya inangangailangan ng uh, guidance for their home care. Since July 2020, when the OHCC was established until July 26, 2021, there have been over 40,000 transactions received. The public may call the OH emergency hotlines. Aside from the OHCC telephone numbers for health emergencies and COVID-19 related concerns, Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Philippines has once again seen more than 8,000 new COVID cases today. Based on the latest case bulletin of the Department of Health, there were 8,127 additional COVID-19 cases, pushing the nationwide running total to 1,625,816. Out of the total number of confirmed infections, 66,895 are considered active cases. Of the active cases, 94.6% have mild symptoms. Only 1% were asymptomatic, 1.30% were moderate, 
1.1% were in critical condition and 1.9% were in severe condition. The death toll climbed to 28,427 after 196 more people died. However, the recovery tally increased to 1,532,494 after 4,343 more patients have beaten the viral disease. Meanwhile, the DOH reported 160 new cases of the highly transmissible COVID-19 Delta variant. The Philippines now has 331 known cases of the highly transmissible variant. Children infected with COVID-19 now occupies eight pediatric beds at the Philippine General Hospital. Some are reportedly being intubated, while some are given oxygen support, according to the PGH management. A medical expert, on the other hand, reminded that the younger age group still has a high possibility of being infected with COVID-19, especially those with comorbidity. Marvin Callas will tell us why live. Yes, Marvin? Are it observing a more cautious practices are still necessary for the younger age group not to get infected with COVID-19. Dr. Edsel Salvania, UP Manila Director of the Institute of Molecular Biology and Biotechnology says, although majority of the senior citizens accounts to COVID-19 deaths in the country, the possibility of children getting infected with severe COVID-19 is prominent, especially those with comorbidity. So naturally, lalong-lalo na may mga bata rin tayo na immunocompromised, merong mga um, uh, comorbids, kaya at risk rin po talaga sila. In fact, there's a syndrome uh, in, sa mga bata na mukhang autoimmune, yung tinatawag na parang Kawasaki's disease or MISC uh, sa, na kinokos ng COVID uh, na pwedeng uh, severe po talaga yung maging uh, pinapakita sa mga bata. The Interagency Task Force for the Management of the Emerging Infectious Disease, or IATF, recently ordered to restrain minors from going out due to the threat of the Delta COVID-19 variant. Dr. Salvania says there is still a huge possibility that individuals leaving the house can bring the virus home that could infect other family members, especially those that are not vaccinated. In general, mababa talaga yung porsyento ng mga bata na, ma na mamatay. Uh, and on top of that, lalo na dito sa Pilipinas, uh, mas uh, hindi rin natin sila pinapalabas. So uh, historically, mukhang mababa naman yung nahahawa. Bagamat ngayon, with Delta, pwede rin iuwi ng mga lumalabas ng bahay sa bahay kung nasan yung mga bata. And so, kailangan talaga nating panatilihin uh, protektahan yung ating mga bata. Lalong lalo na sa ngayon, uh, hindi pa sila priority group sa vaccination. The health expert reiterated that the government is still considering the need of inoculating the younger age group against COVID-19. But for now, it is still necessary to prioritize those included in the priority group while vaccine supplies are still limited. That's the latest live. Back to you, Harleen. Thank you, Marvin Kalas, reporting live. The government is willing to increase the budget to sustain the contact tracing program and boost the fight against the pandemic. But the source for the fund remains unclear. Nel Maribohok will tell us why. Contact tracers are very crucial in government's effort to prevent the spread of COVID-19 virus as they will identify the people who may have been exposed to COVID-19. However, according to contact tracing czar Baguio City Mayor Benjamin Magalong, the big problem is the government lacks funding for contact tracers. And the ILG is doing its best to source funding para ma-extend po yung ating remaining contact tracers until December. And this is something very critical po because of the threat of the Delta variant. Magalong said the contract of contact tracers expired last June 30 and was only extended until July 30. He added that there are 6,921 actual tracers hired by the government and they are targeting 56,303 tracers to join in the contact tracing retraining program. Members of the Makabayan Block criticized government on the lack of funding for contact tracers. Mawawalan talaga ng saisay, even how you ramp up your vaccination program, kung yung ibang components po uh, ng uh, paglaban uh, sa kasong ito, no, yung mass testing, contact tracing, uh, treatment, ay napapabayaan po no, dahil sa kawalan ng pondo. 
dapat ipa-audit din talaga itong mga budget na ito no sa COVID-19 response kung ano exactly yung nangyari dito. However, Malacanang assures that the government will do its best to look for funds for contact tracers. Hindi po ako sigurado kung talagang lack of funding dahil nagsabi naman po ang dole na magpapatuloy sila na mag-employo ng mga contact tracers sa lalo na na para dito sa Metro Manila. Pero kung kulan man po yan, eh dadagdagan dahil ang gobyerno naman po ay eh meron pwede pang pag pagkuhanan. Department of the Interior and Local Government under Secretary Epimaco Densing is hopeful that the Congress will consider the passage of the proposed 173 billion peso Bayanian 3. Inaasahan po natin na sana po bigyan tuon itong Bayanayahan 3 law na sa aking pagkakalam ay uh, uh, dapat ang pag-usapan kasi sa budget po talaga ang hinahanap po natin. Kung mapasa po ito, ay magkakaroon po tayo ng budget sa uh, contact research. Then Singh said they need around 5 to 7 billion pesos for the extension of contracts of contact tracers. According to House Committee on Ways and Means Chairman Representative Joey Salceda, the government may seek funds from its savings to support COVID-19 response. Pero kung sa ganitong panahon, eh kailangan po natin na ano, ng, uh, ng I think uh, it's either they augment it or Uh, through other savings, so the House will be a hard-pressed really to pursue Bayanian tree, but we are very committed to Bayanian tree. So minus ulit dun sa 173 billion namin yan. Salceda believes that the Bayanian tree will be approved as this is considered by lawmakers as a lifeline for Filipinos who are suffering from unemployment and hunger during the pandemic. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. Local government units will implement schedules for market and grocery trips and other essential stores amid the enforcement of the enhanced community quarantine. JP Nunez explains why. Starting tomorrow, only quarantine pass holders and authorized person outside of residence are allowed to go out and buy their essential goods. Aside from this, local governments in Metro Manila will impose scheduling and clustering of the communities or barangays that may be allowed to go out to prevent overcrowding and enforce physical distancing measures. In Mandaluyong City, the schedule to access supermarket depends on barangay ordinance. However, on Monday, the market will be closed for disinfection. May kanya-kanya kasing strategy si barangay, katulad sa Addition Hills, mayroon siyang color coding, yung ibang barangay may numbering. In Paranaque City, quarantine pass holders may go to supermarkets anytime within the day but not beyond the 8 p.m. curfew hours. However, a limited number of persons inside the supermarket will be implemented. Non-Paranaque residents are not allowed to buy their goods in the city. We will not allow you quarantine pass uh, other than from the city of Paranaque. Kasi ayon man namin na, alam mo, nagabakor ka, palengke ng Paranaque ka pa mamamalengke. So yung quarantine pass intended for taga Paranaque lang. Meanwhile, in Caloocan City, the color-coded quarantine pass will be reimposed. Orange quarantine pass holder are allowed to enter supermarkets on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. Those with green quarantine pass are scheduled on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday from 1.31 p.m. up to 8 p.m. While those wearing white quarantine passes may go outside depends upon their work schedule. JP Nunez, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And for the news abroad, World Health Organization Chief Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus called for a moratorium of COVID-19 booster shots at least through September. R.K. Liorca tells us why, live. Yes, R.K., please go ahead. A real wide vaccination gap between wealthy and poor countries. This has prompted WHO Chief Tedros Ghebreyesus to call on rich nations to stop administering third shots and wait until at least the end of September to enable at least 10% of the population of every country to be vaccinated. Chief Ghebreyesus said while hundreds of millions of people are waiting for the first dose, some rich countries are moving towards booster dose and that they cannot accept it. I understand the concern of all governments to protect their people from the Delta variant. 
But we cannot and we should not accept countries that have already used most of the global supply of vaccines using even more of it while the world's most vulnerable people remain unprotected. Low-income countries have only been able to administer 1.5 doses for every 100 people, while high-income in countries have administered about 50 doses for every 100 people. WHO said an urgent reversal of vaccine distribution is needed. We need an urgent reversal from the majority of vaccines going to high-income countries to the majority going to low income countries. Israel President Isaac Herzog got his third shot as part of their country's booster program, while the U.S. is also looking into a possible COVID-19 booster. Medical advisor Elaine hoffman Dahl calls booster dose a short-sighted way of thinking. Marielle, the moratorium is part of WHO's plan to vaccinate 40% of the world by December this year and 70% uh, of the world's population by the middle of 2022. Marielle? Thank you, RK Liorca, for that live report. Netizens are questioning why COVID-19 vaccines have not been advertised on television, speculating that companies are hiding its side effects. Paul Gatalian tells us the details live. Yes, Paul, good evening. Marielle, on Sunday, a photo questioning why COVID-19 vaccines have yet been advertised on U.S. television was posted on Instagram. With over 3,800 likes, the post speculates that vaccines have not been advertised due to the requirement of U.S. law to detail the side effects caused by the products. While true, no advertisements have been made, however, the post analysis has been deemed false. Former FDA Commissioner Dr. Robert Califf clarifies that vaccine manufacturers are not able to advertise their products amidst the Emergency Use Authorization, EUA. However, once vaccines are approved by the FDA, companies need to advertise the product's name, FDA-approved use, and the major risks when taking the drug. The FDA website details that companies do not have to list all risks and side effects on advertisement, but can tell viewers where they would find more information. Additionally, the behaviors anti-COVID-19 vaccinations are being discouraged as the Delta variant becomes more prevalent in many countries. The World Health Organization stresses the importance of the COVID-19 vaccine, as well as non-vaccination precautions. We need those who are offered the vaccine to take the vaccine. Um, and there are many safe and effective vaccines that are, are in use right now. So this vaccines and not vaccines only is absolutely critical as we go forward. Um, and we do need you to bear with us as the science grows, as the science changes. But the outcome of this pandemic is completely in our hands. Um, and so how we choose to act, how we choose to behave, um, the decisions that each of us make uh, matter, good and bad. Marielle? All right, Paul Gachelian, thank you for that live report. The death of a Sydney man in his 20s from COVID-19 has prompted health authorities to urge young people to get vaccinated and be wary of how serious the virus is. Marvi Delfin will give us the details live. Marvi? Riel Adi Alaskar, aged 27, was a forklift driver when he died Tuesday evening in his home, 13 days into isolation, making him the youngest person to die in New South Wales, Australia since the pandemic began. Alaskar was not eligible for the Pfizer shots, and so he was not vaccinated when he caught the virus from his wife, who was an aged care worker. He was being checked on daily by district staff, but according to the state's chief health officer, Dr. Kerry Chant, he had suddenly deteriorated and had no underlying conditions. It was unclear if the man had the Delta variant, but most of the latest cases in New South Wales have been that type, and infectious disease doctors have described the Delta variant as an epidemic of younger people. 
Professor Sarah Palmer of the Westmead Institute of Medical Research reminds how extremely contagious the Delta variant is and urges young people to not underestimate their susceptibility to this virus. Alaska was one of two COVID-19 deaths reported in the past 24 hours, on top of the 233 new cases, which is near the 16-month high from last week. State Premier Gladys Berejiklian said that case numbers would likely grow, highlighting the risk as only fewer than 20% of the residents in Australia's largest city are vaccinated. Mariel? Marvi, can you please elaborate on the possibility of uh, death from COVID-19 due to sudden deterioration? Marielle, Professor Palmer said a dramatic drop in oxygen levels can cause people with COVID-19 to not just have breathing problems but to also deteriorate overall quickly to the point where a person can collapse as is the case with Adi Alaskar. Rapid deterioration in a younger person is unusual but not unheard of. Premier Berejiklian notes how this case has dis demonstrated how lethal the disease is and how it affects people of all ages. Back to you, Marielle. Thank you, Marvi Delphine, reporting live from Perth, Australia. Aside from vaccination sites, offices of the Commission on Elections were also flocked by people eager to get registered for the upcoming elections. Dante Amento reports. Erika Marie Vadinar with her friends went early to the Commission on Elections in Bago Bantay, Quezon City this morning. Erika, 20 year old, wants to vote for the first time, but she failed to be registered due to lack of requirements such as appointment and valid ID. I school ID para po maka registro po ako. Eh, kaso po wala po akong dala eh. Kaya hindi po ako nabigyan po ng, ano, ng form. Ronald Balanqui, 25-year-old, also a first-time voter, says he got the chance to visit the Comelec office today after finishing the review for licensure exam. The process was faster because he is complete of the required documents. Yung mga nakaraang araw po is nag-focus ako sa review ko for my licensure exam po sa CHRA po. Kaya, eh, katapos lang po nung nakaraan and kahapon kakalabas na ng result. That's why I, ano po, take this opportunity na yung araw na ito na free na ako. Nag-register na po kami lahat sabay-sabay. Meanwhile, the Comelec reminds those who have not been able to register to come back after the ECQ implementation on August 21. Konting pasensya lang po. Babalik din at babalik din ang registration natin dito sa NCR. In the meantime, kung kayo naman ay hindi tiga in NCR, magparehisyo na po kayo hanggang maari. Dahil kung uh, abutin pa kayo na September, tako, napakahaba na po ng mga pila niyan. Currently, over 61 million Filipinos are registered for the 2022 elections across the country. Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The ruling party, Partido Democratico Filipino, Lakas ng Bayan or PDP Laban, will finalize its roster of candidates next month with Senator Christopher Bongo as its possible standard bearer. The Faction of Energy Secretary Alfonso Pusi will hold its national convention on September 8. The party Secretary General Melvin Matibag says it is sanctioned by the, by the party's chairman, President Rodrigo Duterte. And amid the rift inside the party, Matibag hopes the group of Senator Manny Pacquiao will participate. Kasama sila rito, they are still members of PDP Laban, hindi naman sila tinanggal na members. So, I hope they participate and I know that uh, Senator Pacquiao is interested in running as a, the standard bearer PDP so we might as well join the process of selection. The COSI-led group has also submitted its set of officers to the Commission on Elections signed by COSI as its president and President Duterte as the party's chairman. Political parties have until August 15 and filing their sworn information update statement. But the group of Senator Coco Pimentel does not want to comment for now. For the senator, the pandemic is their current priority and politics should be put on the back burner. Meanwhile, Matibag adds, based on their executive meeting, majority of the party members are fielding Senator Go as the party's presidential candidate with President Duterte as his running mate. 
Nung nakikita ko, mga 90% bro, will want him to be the standard bearer of PDP Laban. Nakikita kasi nila, if that will be the case, then the vice president will be PRRD, then it will be a very formidable tandem. So parang it's the same administration, it will be a re-election of the present administration. Meanwhile, Albay 2nd District Representative Joey Salceda, who is a close friend of Davao City Mayor and Presidential Daughter Sara Duterte Carpio, says the mayor will, gun, will be gunning for the presidency. The lawmaker shares he will recommend Senator Sherwin Gatalian as Mayor Sara's running mate. 100%. Gumawa ako ng presentation sa Foundation for Economic Fellows. I sent her seat to her. She even edited her. And uh, she added that... Ed Ang kailangan ng Pilipinas ay ST, Security and Development. Meanwhile, the Isambayan Coalition doesn't have any problem with the recent exploratory talks of Vice President Lenny Robredo to other possible candidates. The Vice President earlier had meetings with the Lacson Soto Tandem and Senator Richard Gordon, which did not sit well with former Senator Antonio Trillanes IV. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Senator Trillanes. I do not think that uh, by talking to Soto and to Lacson, Lenny is already waltzing with them. No, she is not from my own point of view. In fact, uh, the Isambayan is uh, happy about this development because it would synchronize with the uh, plan of the Isambayan to have just one set of candidates to uh, to uh, uh, go against the uh, candidates of the president and his allies. The coalition hopes that the vice president could also meet them in the coming days. Mambuti pa si si VP Lenny humarap na doon sa isang bayan convenors. Para marinig din natin yung kanyang interpretation sa mga ginagawa niya, ano ko talagang ginagawa. So, siguro within this week or early next week, ha, uh, magkakaroon ng panahon si VP Lenny na humarap sa isang bayan. In a message to UN TV News, her spokesperson Barry Guchetta says they have not received any invitation from the isang bayan, but adds that the vice president is open to meeting them. Meanwhile, this just in, the interagency task force places Laguna, Iloilo City, and Cagayan de Oro under enhanced community quarantine starting August 6 until 15, 2021. Meanwhile, modified ECQ will be implemented in Cavite, Lucena City, and Iloilo Province, while Batangas and Quezon will be placed under general community quarantine with heightened restrictions on the same period. The Philippines is expected to gain the biggest medal haul in history in the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Yumir Marshall will take home the bronze medal after losing against his Ukrainian opponent. The European champion won by split decision in the men's middleweight semi-finals. Meanwhile, another Filipino bet, Carlo Paalam, remains as the only Filipino boxer in the running for a gold medal after punching his way to the men's flight weight final. The Philippines medal hall includes weightlifter Hidulin Diaz's gold and boxer Nesti Petesha's silver. Meanwhile, Filipino Olympic athletes who were not able to clinch a medal will still receive incentives. According to the Philippine Olympic Committee, non-medalists will receive 500,000 pesos each for their part in making the country's campaign in this year's Summer Games. And before we close, we will leave you with a final word, giving glory to God. From the book of Proverbs, chapter 11, verse 23, it says, the desire of the righteous is only good, but the expectation of the wicked is wrath. And those are the reasons behind the news, August 5, 2021. I am Maria Latosa sitting in for William Theo live from Perth, Australia. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold, I'm Angelo Castro the third.
Because we need to know, we will always ask why. I'm Hardin Delgado. We serve the people. We give glory to God.